All You Need to Know, the Bloomberg Quint podcast that prepares you for the day's business. Brought to you by LIC. Good morning to everyone. We have reached midweek and I am Hormas Fatakia, back to tell you all that you need to know on the 24th of February. First up, Tata Consumer Products will be the new entrant on the Nifty 50 when the semi-annual rejig of the index takes effect on the 31st of March. The consumer company will be replacing state-run gas distributor Gale India. Edelweiss Alternate Research says that the inclusion of Tata Consumer in the Nifty will bring in inflows of $82.5 million, while Gale, owing to its exclusion, will likely see outflows of $60.2 million. United Spirits is initiating a strategic review of select popular brands as the liquor maker eyes long-term profitable growth through premiumizing its portfolio. The company's popular portfolio comprises of around 30 brands and the strategic review will focus on about half of this by volume. The review, however, will not include the McDowell's or the director's special trademarks. UPL says that two fatalities were reported due to the fire that was caused at its Jagadia unit. In addition, 26 workers were injured and another five workers are missing. The fire took place in the wee hours of Tuesday due to an explosion. UPL says that the plant was shut since the 5th of February for its planned boiler inspection. People familiar with the matter have told Bloomberg that India's biggest renewable power producer, Renew Power, is nearing an agreement to merge with RMG Acquisition Corp. The deal will give Renew Power, which is backed by Goldman Sachs, an enterprise value of $8 billion. A private placement of $855 million is being raised from investors to support this transaction. Sources said that Renew will get $610 million in net proceeds after paying some of its debt and some existing investors who are selling portion of their stakes. India is now the largest supplier of workers globally across online platform jobs, according to a report from the International Labour Organization. The report says that India's share rose by 8 percentage points between 2018 to 2020, while it declined in other developing countries except Ukraine. The rise in India's share was in line with the rise in offshoring of IT, BPO and software services to the country. However, the participation of women on online web-based platforms was the lowest in India at 21%. The Office of New Drugs of the US FDA has denied Sun Pharma Advanced Research Company's appeal of the complete response letter with regards to the new drug application for Taclantis. In its appeal denied letter, the Office of New Drugs requested the conduct of a new phase 3 study in metastatic breast cancer patients to support any potential resubmission of the Taclantis NDA. In international news, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell signaled that the central bank was nowhere close to pulling back on its support for the US economy. Powell told the Senate Banking Committee overnight that the economy is a long way away from their employment and inflation goals and is likely to take some time for substantial progress to be achieved. Powell also said that the US economy may grow at 6% this year as compared to a 2.5% contraction last year. If you have received your vaccination shots or are set to receive it anytime soon, here's some good news for you. Thailand may scrap its two-week mandatory quarantine for foreign visitors who have proof of COVID-19 vaccination as the country looks to boost its tourism industry. The government plans to consider allowing visitors who can produce a vaccination certificate to skip quarantine. Thailand's tourism industry contributed to about one-fifth of the country's pre-pandemic economy. Bitcoin fell over 12% overnight, falling below the mark of $50,000 to the lowest level in over two weeks, while UBS has advised clients to exercise caution when it comes to Bitcoin speculation. Kathy Wood of ARK Investment Management called this a healthy correction and that they are very positive on the token. Payments platform Square purchased a further $170 million worth of Bitcoin after a $50 million purchase in October. And with that, I head over to Neeraj Shah for the trade setup of the day. Morning, Neeraj. We did trade with gains for most parts of the day on Tuesday, but could not sustain them. How are we set up for today? Time will tell, Hormuz. But good morning to you and all the listeners. Well, I'll reiterate what Hormuz has said already, but because it is so important. The economy is a long way from our employment and inflation goals, and it will likely to take some time 
for substantial further progress to be achieved. These were the words of Jerome Powell. And this certainly brought about cheer, albeit a bit delayed kind of a reaction from the markets on an intraday basis, the US markets that is. But since all is well that ends well, I reckon people would be happy with the way the US markets ended yesterday. The US screen looked a lot better than what it was looking intraday. But bear in mind that the US futures are still flat and maybe smarting from the deep cuts that the markets saw intraday. So will this impact the Asian screen? I would reckon some of the Asian screen the last time I saw was still bathed in red. So it's very difficult to figure what the markets may do short term simply because of the volatility attached. And for our markets, even more so because it's an expiry week. But a quantitative model that I follow from time to time or look at from time to time suggests that markets tend to bounce back from these extreme fear kind of zones. And the skeptic can even argue that we are not in the extreme fear zone as yet. And both arguments would be correct. Hence, experience says maybe be bottoms up. And for today, there are a bunch of things that people should keep an eye out for. Tata Consumer, which Hormuz already spoke about, is well known. But you should also keep in mind that the seventh consumer stock in the Nifty, after the likes of Asian Pains, HUL, ITC, Britannia, Nestle and Titan, will make the consumer sector weight increase on the Nifty from about 11 to 11.6%. Not much, but up. Good for the index, more predictability, less volatility. I'll also focus on the PSUs, right? Uh, there's a PM webinar on divestment and privatization, and thus PSU banks and BPCL, etc., would all be in focus. Life insurance stocks could be in focus too, because HDFC Life has been reinstated as a buy at Goldman Sachs with a target of 880 rupees per share. And that should keep all the uh, life insurance stocks in focus. And I think IT stocks may have been battered, but some of the large caps are now available at valuations that mid-caps were available before the mid-caps ran up. I mean, that's the differential currently. I'd urge all of you to read some reports on the BQ Research Report section or some stories done by my colleagues or some other platforms as well, frankly, not just in Bloomberg Quint, any other platform. It might give you an idea or two about what to do within IT. So a bunch of uh, bottom-up opportunities, very difficult to call what the market will do in the near term, especially because it's the expiry week. I think maybe, just maybe, once Thursday goes away, there might be some more predictability if the global market stays stable. Let's wait and watch. Have a safe trading day, everybody. Thanks for tuning into this podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to All You Need to Know. Did you know that you can listen to this show on the IVM Podcast app? On the IVM Podcast app, along with this, we have a number of other shows which you think you'll enjoy. Listen to Cyrus Says with Cyrus Brocha as the host. Listen to Pesa Vesa with Anupam Gupta. The Scene and the Unseen with Amit Varma or Shunya One hosted by Shila Ditya Mukhopadhyay and myself. Check out the IVM Podcast app to get more talk content that you will enjoy. Brought to you by LIC. LIC.